Hey guys, how you going? Hope you're all doing very well. This evening I'm going to be doing another movie review. This movie is a drama from Austria. This is spoken in the German language with English subs, released in the year 2012, directed by Ulrich Siedl, and this film is called Paradise Love. So Paradise Love is about this overweight Austrian woman. She's over 50 years old. She's got a low self-esteem. She's a single parent of this teenage daughter, and she just doesn't see where her life is going. And so one day she decides that she's going to go on a holiday to Kenya. So she leaves her daughter behind for someone to look after her until she comes back. And so she travels to Kenya, and this is where Austrian women of the the same age of her actually meet up with this character and tell her how good their uh, Kenyan men are at making love. And so this is something she's always wondered about African men. So she wants to track down a man and see for herself if they're as good as these women are telling her. So she ends up doing this very reluctantly and there's a little bit of a sexual encounter with this man that she starts to develop feelings for. But the problem is, is that this man is actually manipulating her self-esteem to the point where she's been exploited for money. And so she feels a strong level of emptiness. The depression is starting to get worse, but she's going to go on a quest in order to try and find the thing that's missing for her, from her life, which is ultimately love. And so whether or not she can is something you're going to have to find out for yourself, because that's as far as I'm going with my synopsis. Now my thoughts on Paradise Love. As far as Ulrich Seidel is concerned, he is one of the most provocative filmmakers in European cinema, and so I was very excited to finally get the opportunity to see a movie of his. Now his movies in Australia are very hard to come by. He's made movies such as Dog Days, uh, Import Export, which are his more famous films, but there's no way I can actually get my hands on them for a reasonable price. So I'm going to have to actually wait a little bit longer before I finally see those movies. So Paradise Love was not only the first Ulrich Seidel film I was going to watch, it was also the first film in the trilogy of Paradise Paradise films. You've got Paradise Love, Paradise Faith, and Paradise Hope. And so I've actually got Paradise Faith that I'll watch a little bit later and review after I've seen it. But this was the first introduction to Ulrich Siedl. So on one hand, I was very, very excited. On the other hand, I was a little bit skeptical because the beauty of European cinema is that it's very, for a very acquired taste, it's very subjective. Some people are going to love it. Some people are going to hate it. And so for me, I don't love every European movie that comes along, but I can appreciate these European movies for actually being a lot different from mainstream Hollywood or Australia movies for that reason. I think that European stuff is a lot more secure in sexuality and this movie really does centre around sexuality and all the ugliness that sexuality has and so when I saw the trailer I thought to myself okay I'm actually going to give this every opportunity to impress me and at the end of the film I will say that yes the movie does demonstrate the def different levels of sexuality in film as far as European and American cinema is concerned but I also thought that there's everything that is wrong with European cinema as well and so it's not the masterpiece that I was actually hoping it would be which is something I'll go into a little bit later as far as the criticisms are concerned. But what I liked about Paradise Love is that it's showing you the ugliness of sexuality. It was showing you the ugliness of nudity, uh, of sexual encounters. These are stuff that you don't see in mainstream Hollywood. A lot of these movies that you see, as far as love is concerned, it has a happy ending. It's a sugar-coated, fairy tale sort of romantic comedy world. Whereas in this movie, it's showing you the sheer ugliness. It's a very depressing experience. And it's an experience that I think Ulrich Siddle really nailed, not only in the dialogue or the acting or the, the encounters that these characters have, but also through the visuals that the movie creates. And so you've got a movie about two different cultures exploiting each other. You've got um, old... Austrian women that are exploiting the poor sort of uh, environment that these Kenyan men are living in. But at the same time, these Kenyan men realize that these women have insecurities about themselves, and they're actually preying upon that. And so when all of this whirlwind sort of vicious cycle of manipulation and exploitation is concerned, you get that sense of, hopeless, of hopelessness. These characters are not going to find what they're looking for, and it shows the difference between lust and love. And a lot of films actually do show you the difference between lust and love, is that you see someone, and they're actually giving, uh, ma making love to you, and having sex with with you, it doesn't necessarily mean it's love. It could be lust. It could be actually doing it for al in alternate sort of reasons. And these reasons, when you you find out that both sides are manipulating each other, it's just a whole sense of tragedy that the movie has. And so you've got this woman who is very, very insecure. She's got a poor self-esteem. All of a sudden, these men that she deems as very attractive are actually taking a liking to her. And she thinks to herself, okay, well, they must like me because I'm nice or that they like my body. But in reality, they're liking her because she's got the money. And that that she's willing to, to give these guys money in order to feel that love. But because it's not really love, this is the vicious cycle that the movie really captures you in. And so it's a very awkward sort of sexual sort of experience where you've got these scenes where 
there's nudity, there's graphic nudity, full frontal nudity, but it just makes you feel very, it's a very cringeworthy. It's a movie that makes you feel very, very uncomfortable because it's in no way arousing. Is that it shows you, as I said, that ugliness. Not ugliness in the body and what you're actually seeing, but ugliness because it's, it's basically missing everything that makes lovemaking as you know the, the special thing that it is. And when you're missing that special thing, I've always felt that these characters were not going to get what they were looking for. The African men, as I said, it was basically about exploiting Africa and at the same time, it, exploiting the insecurities of you know some women and so the whole movie just has that very cruel nature to it where i think that it's very reminiscent of a lot of european cinema i didn't think i don't think this movie would do so well in mainstream hollywood is because they're not after this kind of experience and this experience was complemented by very good acting performances you got a fantastic script that i thought was actually quite witty it actually made me laugh there were some scenes that were a little bit out of place and very random especially the very uh, at the very start of this movie i thought it was actually quite funny and i wasn't expecting that sort of start to it so it does have a few chuckles here and there but i thought the script it really captures the viewer and actually gives you that insight into these people who are missing something and they're trying to find it in all the wrong areas and then you've also got a movie that is completely missing a soundtrack that's not dictating when you should be feeling a certain level of you know sympathy or you know um, sympathy or, or sadness or you know all that kind of stuff so it's not really pulling any lazy tricks that a lot of other movies have and so you've also got the visuals and i think the visuals are the most impressive part of this film is because it feels like it's a photograph that's come to life on the outside you've got the kenyan beaches and the kenyan beaches are absolutely beautiful and it's a very static sort of way that this movie is shot where you've got a very still picture and you've got these characters that are talking in the middle of this picture but behind them it's very still and so it's almost like a photograph that's come to life so it does give you that artistic feel and that artistic feel is very reminiscent of a director who has his own style and so you know you're watching an Ulrich Siddel film because a lot of his other trailers it has that same sort of style and so this is what I love about directors who can actually make something that you watch a movie and you think to yourself yep that is this specific director Lars von Trier does it Michael Haneke does it and this movie actually had a lot of similarities with Michael Haneke it's an Austrian film, and I felt as though yeah, Ulrich Siedl does have a lot of you know, uh, yeah, qualities about his movies that do remind me of Michael Haneke without ripping off Michael Haneke. So it's a, a visually, it's a, actually quite a stunning film, and the beauty of the visuals contradicts the ugliness that these characters are going through. And so it's basically about lust, as I said, lust and love, and because it's missing that warm heart, I just felt as though it was an empty experience. And uh, I thought, yeah, both an empty experience in a very good way, and also an empty experience in a bad way, which is what really gets me to the negatives. And the negative of this film is that it's way too long. It goes for 116 minutes, and for a story, uh, for a movie of this quality, I thought it needed a better story. This is a movie about sex tourism. It's about this woman who goes in trying to find love, and it doesn't really have any elevation, or it doesn't really have any a change in the tone of the film it just feels like it's on a straight and narrow and when it's on a straight and narrow for 116 minutes unfortunately it does outstay its welcome and it did become a chore uh, to get through by about the three quarter stage and so I wanted it to finish and I felt like fast forwarding this movie and this is ultimately the problem with a lot of European cinema is that I think it does get caught in its self indulgence a little bit too much and so it does become a little bit monotonous and you, you start to look at your watch and unfortunately that is exactly what happened to me I was starting to look at my watch I really got to the point of what Ulrich Seidel was actually trying to show and it's just a little bit of overkill he was elongating a few scenes to the point where I thought, okay, well, you're just showing off a little bit. Yes, I got to the point, Ulrich, come on, just cap it off and uh, basically end it there. But unfortunately, it goes for about 20 minutes too long, and that was ultimately the biggest problem in the film. And that's ultimately, as I said, the problem with European cinema. Sometimes these things that they risk actually pay off, and other times they don't quite pay off. But I still respect the fact that Ulrich Siddle was actually creating something that he was his own style. But it's definitely a move that I'll only ever watch once. And so as far as replay value, it's non-existent but a lot of these types of movies aren't really demanding a repeat viewing it's just a viewing that I think a, a lot of people are either love or hate for me I'm in the middle and that's why I'm going to give uh, Paradise Love two and a half stars all right guys that's it for my review hope you enjoyed it till next time keep watching movies and I'll see you later